الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us today All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us stomachs who digested lunch and were able to benefit but by Allah I praise him today for the opportunity and the means to listen to my brother to our teacher Sheikh Khalid Latif why first time I have ever heard the Sheikh the Sheikh went to college with my wife they took Arabic together and I said but I never I never heard anything she said you'll like what you hear I said you'll like what you hear and wallahi I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for listening friends I'm going to change my entire topic illuminating the path let's stick with that that was unbelievable in the beginning I wasn't sure I was like this is a very very intense beginning so I want to get directly where he left off. I want to take directly where he left off from the example of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. I was almost cringing when he was like, the Umar radiallahu an felt the hand of his daughter loosen as she was losing air. He, he narrates that he, her hand, she was brushing the dust out of his beard. I cringed. I disliked the personality of that the person who did that, that specific characteristic, I started to dislike that. And I started thinking to myself, how could that person get correct? How could that person be better? And I thought to myself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a message. And He gave us a chance. And there were three main things I took from the shaykh. Three main things. Number one, be real. Every human being makes mistakes. And if you want to illuminate the path, write one thing down for yourself. The path is long, the path is a, is a great distance from here, but it's going to start with one step. I don't care how long this path is, it's going to take me one step to get there, and the next, and the next, and the next. And it's going to take me realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to us in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, Ayah number 82, and I'm going to lift up exactly where you left. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمًا The Qur'an was revealed with two things. And this is the climax of what he said. Without Qur'an, a drunken person wouldn't be able to change his path. Friends, without Qur'an, we wouldn't be able to have healing. Because all of us in this room, whether it be a scholar, a speaker, a mufti, a sister, all of us hurt. Wallahi, I, I went through troubles recently, just now, early in life. Shifa'u wa rahmatu mu'mineen. There is healing and mercy. For who, guys? And I won't ask too many questions. It's a main session. I'm supposed to be serious. Tell me. Who is this healing and who is this mercy for? Rahmatul lil mu'mineen, believers, right? وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا But the zalim, the one who removes what's supposed to be in its place from its pedestal, somebody who does wrong and sticks to that wrong, this Qur'an, the story and the message of Islam, it's only going to increase him. It's going to increase him. He's going to continue thinking, yeah, it's a backwards religion. Yeah, it says to beat your wives. It says to do this. We all hurt. We all have unfulfilled requirements in life. And I want to try to jump right in here, illuminating the path. Some of us never made it into a click, right? Some of us couldn't rhyme and we weren't thugs. Some of us weren't preppy. Some of us weren't sassy enough. So what we did eventually was we took this anger, right? Because when you get into a clique, when you get into a clique, then you represent, right? And then I can say, yeah, I'm, I'm a thug for life and look at these preppies. I mean, you can represent yourself, right? But Muslims, we never made it. Because our culture, our etiquette dictated us to have the best manners. So you can't really be a real thug, right? Because your hat is sideways or because you're acting a certain way. So you start saying, man, I don't know what to do. So we brought that into the masjid, right? We brought that into masjid and it's like, well, my beliefs in Islam is about this and your beliefs, they're wrong. Friends, instead of making the path a lot brighter, instead of calling the drunkard into the masjid, we made it difficult for the sober guy to pray in the masjid. 
Right? We've made it difficult for the man who came into the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who came into Majlid al-Nabawi, which is right next to it, connected as the house of Rasulullah. He came in and he had to urinate. So what did he do? On a corner and he did his business. I want you to think about that. The companions, that would be me and you. The people who are learning no Islam. They know Islam. They went to stop him. The man who was Islam. What did he say? Stop. Let him finish his business. I want you to think about that. And I want to pick up exactly from the where Sheikh left off. He said if a drunkard, someone who drank alcohol, or someone who buried his daughter, someone who beat on his slave, if he can turn a leaf, then I want you to stop and let, let literally hear his voice, and I'm going to continue. So if the munafiq, if the mushrik, if a guy who worships a statue, he can still see, he can still breathe. The girl who, forget about covering, shakes what her mama gave her. When that girl can breathe and live and be and smile and laugh, and she's still breaking the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then friends, what do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us when we fulfill what He wants from us? Right? The hijabi, the non-hijabi, the guy who prays, the guy who doesn't pray. God still gives, I still woke up this morning, right? Right? I still woke up, I still ate food, I was still happy. At the same guy, the time who's, the guy who robbed a bank this morning, he woke up, he was pretty happy, he spoke to people. Can you imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this path, He's giving us stuff we haven't even done anything yet. Can you imagine? Can you comprehend healing and mercy when you do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do? And there's no other place in the Quran that I could connect with this to someone who did something even worse. And someone, and all I need, can everyone repeat after me? Just say one word for me. Lil Mu'minin. So for the believers is healing and mercy in the Quran. And I wanted to find the most, and I'm going to ask uh, our Shaykh to correct me, despicable actions of a person who flipped the coin. Is it fair to call the musicians despicable? So we start in Surah Shu'ara, Surah number 26. We're going to start, I wish we had, subhanAllah, not more time. I just hope that you have, have gone back and read Surah Kahf. Remember the ayahs I quoted this morning? Write this down, surah number 26. We'll start from, I think the best thing to do, I'm going to cut it. I want it to start around 40. But I'm going to start around 40, 45, somewhere around there. 45, 46. I want you to keep telling yourself, if I do what God wants, dude, the boat is going to be so much more beautiful. The scenery is going to be so much more blessed. Because when I do the work of Allah, and I... I, I can't help, but I learned so much last night. When you do the work of Allah and you fight against even the jinn, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoint to you? The group of the good jinn, right? Imagine. Fam, we miss Fajr and we wake up and you're like, wow, it's a great day. <laughs> Can you imagine waking up for Fajr, praying to Allah, and then here's the best part. Having the hidayah to say, oh Allah, thank you for letting me wake up. That would just be that's so not only getting up for Fajr, not only knowing that the path is illuminated, but when you get up, you pick up your cell phone and you call the city and say, Hey, thanks for putting street lamps. I was driving down 495 and I, the light helped me. So when we do this, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change our hearts? Let's do ourselves a favor. I'm going to pick up from Musa alayhi salam, surah ayah number 26. Uh, Surah number 26, ayah number 44, 45. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now, really, in the name of Allah, really genuinely say, Oh Allah, we're doing this because you had mercy on us. You had, you benefited us. I want you to put yourself just like this. The room is dark. And a guy is sitting on a huge, you've all seen the pyramids, on a huge, massive throne. And everything about him is chiseled. And he's standing there and saying, Ana rabbukumul That I am God. And you have been paid. 
you have been paid by this wretched man. And literally you're sneaking around. And what you have done, and we find this in the narrations in the Torah, and you'll find some talk of this in the Bible too. When the magicians of the, of the Pharaoh threw the sticks on the ground, what they did was they, they lowered, remember in Prince of Egypt, where they closed all the windows? They made everything really dark. And they only shined one light into the room. And the magicians took smoke and mirrors, and one of them used a mirror. Now think about it, back then mirrors are something very unique. So they kind of flashed the light on the stick. What did it make the stick look like it was doing? Saharu Ayn. It was an optical illusion. Exactly, Quran says it. Not, so I don't need to quote books of the past. Mullah Abdul Nasser was pointing out out here, he said that the Quran itself said it was an optical illusion. So they tricked the eyes of the people. Jazakallah khan so they tricked the eyes of the people and they themselves knew that it was a trick but the people are like, whoa, now wretched, now these people are not just doing magic, they're lying to the people, they know he's not God because if he was God he would do the magic himself. They buy into it and then they stand there and they're like, okay Moses, what you got? Right? They were like, so what's next? Musa alayhi salam, and you can find this from ayah 40 on, surah 26. He throws the stick. Now they actually see the stick be, get scales. They see the breath. They see a live creature. <laughs> they believed and they knew what was fake and they knew what was real. They knew when someone was blowing up a building and when someone was killing in the name of Allah and when it was real and when it was fake. And Shaykh Khalid said, keep it real. So they saw this and they said, <laughs> You see what happens to the true believer? Bang! Guys, they're literally still wearing their, their magician suits. They're all, they're dressed up. They're dressed up hood. They're not wearing hijab. They don't look Muslim. The Lord, we believe in the Lord of the Alameen. We believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. Guys, what I'm trying to point out here is the change was automatic in them. They, they didn't screw up, friends. They were in the act of screwing up. They were in the middle of chatting online, knowing they were doing haram. They were, but then bang, a miracle came to them. They saw something that was completely unique. They saw physical law break. A stick wood became a snake. We hear words that we know couldn't have come from a human being. But the reactions, not as quick. Now watch what happens. And I don't know about you, but I, I hate to constantly reference pop culture, but it's a very big part of our life. Right? So I want you to think of high school. Think of high school in the way, think of glee. Okay? These people are throwing their slushies in their faces and this and that, and they're seen as dorks in the community, but they believe in what they're doing. I know this is Boston, you guys are more religious than I am. So glee is a TV show where people sing <laughs> where people sing songs and they're questionable about their, you know, their preferences in male and female and it's all, it's a whole bunch of, it gets a little bit messy. Guys, I'm talking from the shift, not for slap. So, Islam. <laughs> friends, 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 hold it here, hold it, put it in the box and then look at it. They believe what they're doing is good, whether they're jocks or whatever. I want you to put yourself there. That's a TV show. We're talking about actual magicians looking at it and saying, Rabbi Musa wa Harun. Now Fir'aun, the guy who paid their salary, I want you to think of the Fir'aun of today as society. Society that tells us how to dress, how to do the thing with our hair, how to act, how to wear a rubber band on our hand. And if you're a baller, you wear baller shorts all the time. Bro, are you going to play sports? No, for real, for real. I wear balling shorts all the time. It's like, no, no, sister, same time. God fam, I took a shot at them. You got it all wrapped up over here, but the ba-bang! I mean, come on, fam. <laughs> Shaykh Khalid said it, I'm going to say it right. When keeping it real needs to be done. So y'all know that, guys. We live dictated by them. 
we feel better about ourselves because, okay, I'm fulfilling this one religious thing. Okay, I'll take, I'll take it my way. We dress like this and all of a sudden we see you guys and we think we're better. We all have to keep it real, fam. We all have to illuminate the path together. Because if I illuminate my path, and I'm going down and I'm saying, see, I realized Islam. I take weekend courses. I study with the shaykh. I'm better. Or I wear niqab and she doesn't. He wears, he has a beard and I don't. It, that in itself becomes arrogant. So all of a sudden, again, go back to, the, go back to this example. So Fir'aun says to them, قَالَ آمَنْتُمْ لَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ آذَنَ لَكُمْ Fir'aun society says to you, don't get too religious. I didn't give you permission. It's not fashionable to be modest yet. It's not fashionable to be respectful to women. I, Fir'aun, didn't give you the chance. إِنَّهُ لَكَبِيرُكُمُ الَّذِي عَلَّمَكُمُ السِّحْرُ and they pointed, Fir'aun pointed at Musa the one who was humbly bringing the message. And he pointed at him and goes, you're the biggest magician. You're the one who changed the people. Guys, get out of the block of Fir'aun as a guy. We live under a Fir'aun today. Because when they tell us how to act, we act that way. When they tell us how to walk, we walk that way. When they tell us how to rhyme, we rhyme that way. And when they tell us, and I said this at Central Zone and no one got it, when they tell us, it feels so wrong, but it feels so right, it doesn't mean I'm in love tonight. <laughs> then we follow word for word. Guys, I think you lose the concept here sometimes. Totally off topic. Surah Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Shaytan, and I won't go into it completely. He told Shaytan, he said, use your, your voice. What is the voice of Shaytan? Guys, have you ever thought about what we listen to? I quoted it wrong at East Zone. But let's illuminate the path together. We're talking about illuminating the path. And they are telling us, no regrets. Let's go all the way tonight. Now you're laughing, but we listen to the same thing over and over again. So then you get close to haram after like two years of listening to the same thing over and over and over. And you're like, you'll literally say it, no regret. It's okay. It'll be fine. And you start to realize that you've been programmed because Fir'aun told you, take that off your head. I didn't tell you it was fashionable. You know, stop being modest. I didn't say that it was fashionable. And the Moses, those religious people, those are the guys who are doing magic on you. Don't go to MSA, don't go to classes, don't spend time working with people. These guys are deviant, these guys will make you extreme, and these guys are the biggest magicians. They're the dangerous people. So he says to them, you just wait and see. You just wait and see, I have something for you. We are threatened today to not be cool. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that Fir'aun, the guy who thought he was God, standing in front of guys, I don't know, you all have been to Egypt to see the pyramids. He's literally 45 to 50 feet above them looking down and saying, I will definitely There's an uh, emphasis at the beginning and then there's a uh, new shadda at the end. Definitely. I'm going to cut your one arm off, then I'm going to cut the leg off on the other side. So you can't say I have a splitting headache on one side. I'm going to cut one leg off, one arm off, and with what's left over, I'm going to crucify you. All of you. You guys are going to follow the status quo other than what VH1 says. You guys are going to follow the status quo other than what Little Wayne tells you. No. You aren't. Because if you do, you'll be an outcast. They're being told they're going to be crucified. We're being told you're not going to be cool. So I want you to know today, hell isn't cool. So when someone says you won't be cool, I'll be okay. The breezes of Jannah are beautiful. 
Now listen to the person who's being pointed at. I'm going to cut you limb from limb and I'm going to crucify you. And I'm not just some guy threatening to you. I'm Fir'aun. I mean, who are you? What do you know? And they look to Fir'aun and remember healing and mercy. Shifa wa rahmatulil. For the believer, you guys don't think they're afraid? That they're hurting? No harm. We can handle it. That's the transition. I ain't playing around. So you're going to cut our arms and legs off. We're not going to be cool. But when we get to Allah, we'll say, Allah, we're not so cool. We thirst. Oh Allah, give us something. And we get to the paradise, we'll say, Oh Allah, we weren't fashionable. Bring to us the green silks and adorn us in clothing. Oh Allah, we didn't sip on the scissor of the dunya. Bring us the wine of Jannah in the goblets. Oh, you think, guys, I am a, a more of a literalist. I believe all the things in this world are a reminder of the hereafter. I believe that in ecstasy, you in, ingest. One tablet of ecstasy, by the way, just so I'm on the record on this. The only drug that has been known to show brain cell damage in one use. If anyone thinks I'm promoting drug use. When you eat a tablet of um, ecstasy, what happens? You can see sound. You can taste colors. You could do that. <laughs> no, I, mean, I ain't playing around. I, I'm going to take this the next step. Sheikh said a drunkard was given hidayah. A guy who said throughout the early 2000s, okay, and got, caught a cup. He was drinking goblet. Allah's not going to give us the same? Y'all are still laughing, but I'm for real, for real. Oh wait, that didn't work either. <laughs> Guys, can you imagine when the Firaun of our time says you're not fashionable? It's not about dressing, not dressing nicely. But it's about knowing that the path is consistent. And I love the last thing that he said that I wrote. So they said, They said, back to Piron. The guy's going to cut them in half and, and, and who's going to uh, put, put them on a crucifix. They say back to him. By the way, if today I told you, sisters, I was going to write something negative about you on my Twitter, we would change. Brothers, I'm going to write something on your Facebook. Oh, Allah. And guys are going to be crucified. And what is it? Uh, it's uh, a pain that is that they could tolerate. It's a pain, and Sheikh was actually that's why I, I while uh, Sheikh Khalid was speaking, I leaned over to Malan Abdul Nasser. And again, scholarship. I, some somewhere online, he like defined the word blade, all of its uses in Quran. I was like, wow, I like you. <laughs> and I started rubbing him. <laughs> that's why I'm doing this. The point is, it's. Uh, with tolerance and they can go beyond. So they're telling you, you're going to cut my arms and legs off and I'm going to go to Jannah. And you ain't. <laughs> so I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. <laughs> and they say this statement, friends, and I wish, I don't, I wish for you to get this, but I wish I could live these words. Inna ila rabbina You could do anything you want to me. You could talk about me around my back. You could post things on my Facebook. You could say ill things. But I'm going to go meet Allah. And I'll sort my stuff out over there. My path has always been clean. My path has been better than a drunkard. My pain is less than those who came out of the Masjid Nabawi and they knew that Rasulullah had passed away. We couldn't tolerate that guy. Our pains are less, but there's still a healing for it. Allah loves us. That's why He told us to pray so we can talk to Him. Allah wants us to be successful business people, so He told us how to do finance. Allah wants us to love and illuminate our hearts, so He told us how to get married. Allah wants us to succeed. Allah But we did, we, we go. We come back. Does anyone know? And I, I, I can't speak too long. What's the next ayah after Ila Rabbina Munqalibun? After the fact that they turned to Pharaoh 
they looked MTV in the face and they said, that's great, thank you very much, but I have a way of life. I have a way of etiquette. I have a way to deal with my women. I have that. I don't need you. They looked them dead in the face and again, they said, I'm confident because God wants me to succeed. Can someone tell me what the next eye is? I just want you to be able to know that this razzle-dazzle that we do up here, what was Shaykh, where did all of Shaykh's con, uh, topic come from? What did he do? What, Shaykh, Shaykh Khalid Latif's talk, where, what, what was 90% of his talk? It was Sirah, mostly it was Sirah, how Rasulullah sallallahu but that's fair, at least you tried. The Prophet sallallahu his life, no, I, I genuinely mean that. There are 50 men in the room, and a sister had to call out, because we're afraid. I'm going to go off on my box again, fam. Northeast, we're afraid to answer questions. I guarantee it's already on Twitter. In the seventh minute of Maulana Abdul Nasser's speech, no, Wissam Sharif's speech, Maulana Abdul Nasser corrected him. Right? We don't see it as benefit. He corrected, that's how we live here in New York, Boston. We correct each other. No. Someone knew more, he threw it off the glass and I dumped it. We benefit from each other. <laughs> fam, Northeast, we have to be real, fam. How many people are like, yo, sir? <laughs> he doesn't even wear a dopey. <laughs> My point is, <coughs> Sira, he gave us Sira, and wallahi, I never heard him speak, it, it, it touched me, it worked. And I'm not just pushing stock, NYU. <laughs> and what am I doing? The whole time, I read you ayah number 82, Surah Bani Israel, and I'm literally, I'm not skipping ayahs, I'm reading down from Surah, is, uh, surah Shu'ara, Surah 26. Right? We just make it look a little fancier. I mean, heck, do it without the echo now. Just watch. Without the echo. Islam. Just, it's the same book of Allah. Whether he puts an echo or he doesn't put an echo, the sunnah of Rasulullah is going to help my life get better. The Quran is going to heal. It's going to heal the fact that someone dumped me. It's going to heal the fact that my shape up, that I have a hole in my beard. I'm not playing around. Y'all are all shaped up. Can you imagine if I shaped this bad boy up? You know, the patches here would look like South Dakota. Okay? But that's a pain that I have. But then I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy. I'm not playing around. Allah wants to heal ourselves. So I want you to go home. Now look in the Quran. The same thing that I've been reading. What's the ayah? You all have gadgetry. Tell me, what's the next ayah? Qala. Slowly. Miskeen. Just the first two words. I know it's not ma'u. Allah. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah give you something today and when it's out of the blue and it's so unbelievable, no, it's the barakah of reading those words of Quran. My dua, Allahumma ameen. And if it's really cool, can you share it with me? I'm not joking. I've done this. I did it in West Coast. Someone, someone stood up and made a dua, said something. And I was like, that's amazing, may Allah give you something. And they got some like super duper, someone who owed them money came back. I was like, yo, you can help. <laughs> Let me get the percentage on that, yo. For real. <laughs> so we end and we're done. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is that? Not, not ma'u. They say in the face of MTV, of Fir'aun, they say in his face, we're not worried about you. We're not afraid of you. Why? We are the first people before it became fashionable. What do you think the word is? Muslimin, mu'minin. Mu'minin, same difference. Same difference, shifa and healing came for the mu'min. And those people, before anything else, they turned to Allah and said, you wouldn't create us to send us to hell. You're going to forgive us. 
Friends, you all know there's a path to go. But all I say unto you, if you don't pray five times a day, start praying two times a day. And I'm not saying this in front of the Mashiach. Islamically, you have to pray five times a day. But I want to be real. I didn't pray five times a day. I grew up in a typical family. I went, my dad always prayed. My mom, my sisters, they came into the village. And I was the last person. It would be time for us, and I was 10, 11, Hempstead, New York. Dad would get up. This was an exercise. I learned it later. It was time for us for prayer. My dad would hand the remote to my mom. So my mom would then, she, and my dad would go pray. My mom would give the remote to my two sisters. And they would sit there for a little bit, and then they would give me the remote and say, we're going to pray. And I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm the youngest. I'm the baby. I'm like, I'm not a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Son. Or 30. I was killing it. And then after a while, what happened? I was like, man, you want grime in here? I was like, yeah, I am pretty grimy. They're praying. They would literally pray in the next room, so I would just put the volume down. <laughs> if you wear tight clothes, start wearing looser clothes. If you have a stutter and you curse, stop cursing. And I'm, let's talk about it openly. If late nights find you viewing things that you know you wouldn't want your mom to know about, eliminate the past. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I have an entire workshop on this. Use only one laptop for it. I'm not joking, guys. Dead serious. Make a rule for yourself. I will only view this on this laptop. Nowhere else under no other circumstances. You then collect all your ography and it stings pinnacle, painfully on that. And you will find yourself, because all of us will say, well, I don't, want, I don't have to watch it. You start realizing, man, I don't need that laptop. And you will help yourself. Because the path, friends, is not that dark. But we brought all of these dirty things in. And I will say this, what I said in the member. The pursuit of Jannah, Jannah, has become secondary. We, brothers, we've been pursuing Jannah. And in our pursuit of Jannah, we have darkened the path to Jannah. Those of you who need to understand what I said, you understand it. Those of you who don't, don't ask. Why do you want to bring darkness? I'm calling Jenna darkness. Why do you need to bring it in? I ask you this much. The path is clear. If you don't do something, start doing it. But know that you will never do everything together. I didn't pray sunnah. I didn't pray sunnah. We're never going to do everything. I'm going to try. Pick one thing. If you wear skirts, then wear loose your top. Brother, if you know that you look, you do the hall pass thing, where it's coming this way and you do this, <laughs> then stop. Hello? <laughs> for real, for real. Kalia, <laughs> Kalia. Stop, guys, you should shake. Brothers, if you know, and, and, and brothers, we're always talking about dress. Forget the dress. Dress however you want. Just dress that way in the masjid. Let's start going to the masjid more. And everybody in this room, learn to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you don't heal in here, who cares what you wear out here? I really, I've got express jeans and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. and a banyan underneath this. Bismillah ta'ala, I leave you with that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our scholars and our speakers. And I want you to realize something. Anyone who came to this MSA conference looking for academic content, you're not getting it from me. Anyone who came here realizing that the masses of today's ummah are not continent to be Muslim, that's the place for you. There are a lot of other places to get sacred, deep, enriched knowledge. And I want to make that available for you. And if it's not available, let's find it together. بإذن الله تعالى all that is clean and pure is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى mistakes misrepresentations are my own. جزاك الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله may Allah give you jannah and before Allah أكبر Allah أكبر Allah أكبر Allah أكبر Allah أكبر Well done.